look, I don't mean to keep talking about Yu-Gi-Oh games doing really weird stuff around this time of year. Maybe it's divine intervention, maybe I just enjoy playing crappy comfort games in the spring, but I just happened to stumble upon yet another fascinating piece of design by the King of Games, and it gave me a great excuse to rewatch Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, so... win-win, I think? I'll take it. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Spirit Caller, released for the DS in 2007, was far from the most ambitious of projects. Its main engine was lazily ported from the last DS Yu-Gi-Oh! game, Nightmare Troubadour, and it shows. Duels are very slow and very clunky, dramatic animations are there for the most iconic of Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters from the original series. Most of the GX monsters just having floating card artwork instead of these absolutely gorgeous 3D models with roughly two loving frames of animation. And this? This is just in the game. Yeah, it's the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. Slowly building a deck out of the scraps you're given is always going to be compelling to some degree, and the difficulty curve is pretty fair and occasionally challenging, despite the hours and hours of grinding and random encounters. Yes, in a trading card game, there are random encounters, but this feels like the most loveless, bog-standard game one could imagine. And yet, it demonstrates one of the most unique forms of adaptation I've seen in a game. Spirit Caller covers the first major arc of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, the rise of the sacred beasts. So during the vampire kidnapping a child with the effects of a trading card part, but before the your trading card girlfriend came back from space and wants to make you her husband part. Early on in the anime, GX protagonist Jaden and his friend Cyrus are set to fight the Paradox Brothers, villains from the original Duelist Kingdom arc of Yu-Gi-Oh!, on the grounds that they'll be expelled from the illustrious Duel Academy if they lose. As the Paradox Brothers are incapable of dueling in a way that follows the actual rules of the game, it's set up as a tag duel, with players sharing field space and life points, meaning that if one goes down, the other goes with him. Cyrus has to learn to overcome his own anxiety, believe in himself as much as he believes in his partner, and discover the difference between using a card and playing a card in order to succeed and save his team's academic card game careers. Spirit Caller is unable to do this. For one, the player character takes the place of Cyrus in this match, and the beatdown-focused cards available to him at this point would likely not sync that well with Jaden's elemental hero cards. On top of that, the game just isn't really down for trying out the ill-defined tag duel rules for one gimmick match, so it splits it up into two different card games. You versus Para, and Jaden versus Docs, with a loss in either duel meaning game over. Normally, you'd just expect that Jaden would win his match off screen. Haha, <laughs> no sweat, bro! Your turn against Para, get your game on! Haha! <laughs> but no, for once in its life, Spirit Caller decides to do something really unique. The day of the match, Jaden thinks that this showdown is gonna be really difficult, so he asks you to look at his deck. Thus, the player is able to see a unique deck-building menu, filled with a bunch of Jaden's signature cards over the first season of GX, and asked to construct his deck for his upcoming duel. And Jaden's deck? Really sucks in its initial form. Tons of situational cards, a flimsy winged Karibo level 10 engine alongside a full Hero Flash suite, an almost fetishistic amount of support for just Elemental Hero Bubble Man, and it doesn't even include Spark Man for access to Elemental Hero Tempest, one of his best options. This deck is trying to be as anime protagonist as possible, with tons of cool last minute moves that'll pull victory from the jaws of defeat. But that just doesn't work in the unscripted, regular card game. Consistency is key, being able to recycle the more situational game winners and bring out the pieces needed to get them out there. And Jaden's deck has next to none of that. However, he's got some pretty incredible pieces he's just not using. 
DD Warrior Lady, Swords of Revealing Light, Graceful Charity, Reinforcement of the Army, Heavy Storm, Miracle Fusion, Sangan, Mirror Force, he's not even using his signature Flame Wingman. There are so many ways to construct a much more consistent deck, and probably dozens of permutations of that deck with different strategies, but almost all of them are assuredly less flashy. It's kind of a rough lesson, emulating the anime heroes will get you kicked down, but being consistent and boring will see you through. And it's maybe not one that a game trying to promote the anime should be teaching, but it's a good sobering lesson and a clever puzzle. You get the deck loaded, are told Jaden goes first, get your game on, and... Wait, you're... you're not controlling this, so... Oh no. In one of the most baffling moves of self-sabotage, you don't even get to play the duel with the cool new deck you just made. No, of course not. This is Jaden's duel. You're not Jaden. Jaden is Jaden. You are helplessly forced to watch the AI play itself with the modified deck you made for it, without knowing Dox's cards unless you're a devout anime fan. Not only is watching someone else play Yu-Gi-Oh! at a non-tournament level without dramatic inflections and cheesy jokes intensely boring, especially at the sluggish pace the game goes through turns in, but you are completely helpless to implement any strategy you might have baked in. Just praying that Jaden holds on to his combo pieces long enough to actually use them, instead of just throwing them on the field and hoping for the best. If he sees a fusion, you know he's gonna use it, even if he could get a much stronger one with just one more turn. And going pure Haymaker, just load it with a bunch of easy to summon strong cards, doesn't really work, because Dox's deck counters it nicely, focused on getting the massive Labyrinth Wall to sit in your way, and using the incredibly risky but very powerful Jirai Gumo to deal damage. It's an intense AI versus AI showdown for all the wrong reasons. Just praying that the one you're rooting for makes decent decisions, and the one he's fighting against makes dumb ones. All of the teaching tools that this duel could have provided are thrown out the window for... something that isn't even cool. Just a waste of time at best. Oh, and if Jaden should happen to lose this duel, something that I I'm sure will never happen, but you know, just in case, you're taken back to before you retool Jaden's deck, meaning that you have to repeat the disassembly and reassembly process every single time. Mercifully, you're at least allowed to save after beating Dox, and your match with Para goes on without gimmicks. It's just absolutely baffling to me how this would be allowed to happen. The concept of the Paradox Brothers duel is licious. Give the player a whole new set of cards, let them figure out their own best strategy with them, and apply it in a relatively tough fight. It's like the Pokemon Stadium rental system taken to a far more strategic level, creating active combos rather than just functions that happen to pair well together. And then the game decides, huh, but what if we made it bad? I understand the thematic idea behind it, trusting your friends and having faith in their cards reflecting Cyrus's same arc from the anime, but this is the one time the game tries to be even slightly original in its... way too long run time, and it bungles every single lesson it wants to teach. Anything that the player can learn is thrown away in order to just make the safest, most brain-dead easy deck to play possible. There are ways to make all of the individual elements of this work, letting the player enjoy the simulated deck themselves, or otherwise being told you'll be using Jaden's deck for this fight. Having Jaded win a scripted duel against Dox in order to put over how cool he is please buy the cards and action figures, and show his strategy for you to emulate. 
having Jaden automatically win or lose depending on how well the player built his deck based around a number of behind the scenes qualifiers. It's so easy to make this work, but the game chooses none of it. Having a great idea and then just throwing it away for no good reason. <sighs> Please, carefully look at your ideas when you decide to implement them into games make sure they work well from both a gameplay and a thematic perspective. Otherwise, just like Jaden and the Paradox Brothers here, you aren't demonstrating anything except how to design for bumbling. Yeah. Duh, of course I knew that. At least now I do. Well, I got all kinds of books on self-motivation. For some reason, my dad keeps getting them for me. Look, there's two things I do with my mouth, talk or eat. So I do, give me a grilled cheese or... Ah! Ah! I led them to the abandoned dorm because I wanted to check out its uh, abandoned cafeteria. <laughs> well, someone's got to eat your grilled cheese if you go. Chumley may have a point. Oh, please, let them win. Let them win. I'll give up grilled cheeses for a week. I'll just fry them instead. Tea. Yeah, and all the more cafeteria food, too. Yes, which makes you wonder why all we've been eating are marshmallows. We already downed all the grilled cheeses. We? So hot. Now I know what grilled cheese feels like. Oh, what are those? My special stuffed pastry is three kinds. We have strawberry, chocolate, and lemon custard as well. Thanks, Miss Dorothy. What's most like grilled cheese? Anyway, I better get going now. <laughs> There's a whole lot of hot sauce out there that needs bottling. And I'm sure you'll bottle it great.